Hey, what's up? Nasir Malik here. Welcome to a new series, Game Room Automation. In this series, we will be learning how to automate our TV, receiver, PS4, Xbox, an HDMI switcher, and other devices. Let me give you a little bit background. So I have a, a surround sound setup at home, 7.1 surround sound. I have a TV, a PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, a media streamer, also um, the um, Xbox, and other devices. We have a remote nightmare. I lost a couple of remotes and they're harder to replace because even with the universal remote controls, you cannot access all the functionality, especially for the receiver. I'm having a tough time. So to do away with it, I decided to automate my game room. This is a part one for the game room automation. Um, I have been working on the ESP32. I'm trying to make it easy enough so you guys can follow along. It's pretty tedious. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and do it with Node MCU. So we're going to be automating this series. It's going to be a long series, so this is a part one. So these are the required components. So you need Google Home, Node MCU, or ESP8266 will be fine if you have just that. Uh, micro USB cables, uh, micro USB cables, and IR uh, emitter module, uh, and IR uh, receiver module. They're both Arduino modules. They work fine with the... Uh, um, the ESP um, ESP8266 or Node MCU. So here's what I'm trying to automate. So what I'm trying to do is to set up, and these are all the this is all the hardware I have. So I have a, a switcher box that has four by two. So four by two means is that it has four inputs and two outputs. So one input goes into the TV and the other one goes to the receiver because sometimes I want to watch it, watch movie or play games on the TV, uh, especially at night when kids are sleeping and stuff. So I don't want to turn on the surround sound because it shakes the whole house. So what I want to do is I want to give it a command to Alexa or Google Home and I want to say play movie on surround sound. This is what I want to happen. So I want to switch the input to two. Next, I want to do is turn on the receiver Third, I want to turn on my media streamer. So it's going to feed in from the input two to the receiver. And then I want to turn on my subwoofer. And then I want to turn on my TV. And from there, I can use the TV remote to watch movies or whatever I want. And also, I can control the TV with voice or a remote control. But when the TV is loud, um, sometimes the Alexa or Google Home may not work. And for that, um, there's another piece that I'm working on, which is uh, hand gestures, and that includes a Raspberry Pi and a camera. Uh, I'm not gonna cover that in this tutorial because this series is pretty big. So step-by-step, step, we'll build these. So next, what I wanna do is, if I'm playing at night, I wanna say play movie on TV. So that means I don't wanna turn on the surround sound since everybody's sleeping. So this is what I want to happen. I want number one. Switch the input from the streamer, input 2. It's going to route that to the TV. Number 2, then I'm going to turn on the streamer. And I'm going to turn on the TV and watch the movie. So let me walk you through the same steps when I want to play the game. So when I say to Alexa or Google Home, play PlayStation 4 on surround sound. So this is what I want to happen. I want it to switch automatically input 3 which is for PlayStation 4 hooked up then turn on my receiver it's going to route this to the output 2 to the receiver and then I'm going to turn on my PlayStation 4 well I'm not going to turn it on but Alexa or Google Home is going to turn it on um, I do have an issue with the PlayStation 4 uh, looks like mm, uh, I'm using ESP32 uh, the Sony I guess doesn't allow you to turn on uh, the PlayStation from non Sony devices through the Bluetooth if you guys have any ideas or any clues or any suggestions I have a couple ideas I'm gonna try but um, um, I welcome you guys to chime in what can we do with this um, then uh, I want to go ahead and turn on my subwoofer and and then I want to turn on my TV and just play a game with my Sony controller so same way if I want to say play PlayStation on TV to Alexa or Google Home, I want them to 
turn on the switcher so it'll be input 3 turn on PlayStation 2 and turn on TV and I should be able to play the game on TV no surround sound for this tutorial the step one is to install Arduino IDE and ESP2 libraries you can watch my tutorial too step two you need to copy the folders to Arduino libraries and these are the three folders I can show you go to my github project and under the libraries you need to copy these three folders onto wherever you have your Arduino installed go under libraries and this is where you need to drop them so this one this one and this one step three connect IR receiver to node MCU so this is how you will be connecting it so this is the IR receiver it has three pins so S wire goes into D5 which is GPIO 14 for node for node MCU positive you could connect to any 3 volt pin on this board for negative you can ground to any ground pin so we're going to connect our IR receiver to node MCU so I have connected the receiver with the female to female breadboard wires so if you look at the receiver you have a uh, the signal pin positive and negative so I'm going to connect this to the mod MCU so this gray one on mod MCU we're going to connect it to D5 which is GPIO 14 so if you look at this you can see a D5 right there so I'm going to connect that there it's the S pin on the receiver then the black one is ground and white one is positive so if you look at the board the uh, the first pin from the the USB connector on the right hand side is the 3 volt so I'm going to put the white one in there and the next one is ground and our IR receiver is hooked up step 4 connect IR meter to node MCU so IR meter has three pins also negative positive and signal so negative goes into ground positive goes into 3 volts and signal going to D2 pin on the node MCU which is GPIO4 next we're gonna hook up our IR emitter similarly it has three pins <clears throat> and uh, one is the signal middle one is positive and negative so we're gonna connect the signal which is a blue one to D2 which is GPIO4 so if you look at mod if you look at the uh, node MCU so third pin from the top it's a D2 this is GPIO4 so I'm going to connect the wire signal wire there blue one and the white and the yellow one is negative and green one is positive on the other side the node MCU we have a 3 volt pin and the ground so we're going to connect them there so the green one is the 3 volt and it gets connected there and the ground oops it came out let me just put it back in so this is ground and 3 volt so they're hooked up so what do I need to do now is I'm gonna um, capture the IR codes with my remote so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna connect the node MCU to the computer and I'm going to use my remote 
and I'm going to capture all of the remote codes that I want to control my TV with. So for the remote, I only want to be able to use, turn on and off the TV, uh, change the volume, select the input, and move the menu up and down, and enter. So those are the only functionality. This is a demo functionality. It is not a full functionality. It's still work in progress. So this is something to show you how to get it set up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Step five, you need to connect Node MCU to your PC and flash the sketch, this sketch. And only thing you need to do in this sketch is to enter your SSID and a password and Heroku app that you have already deployed. Deploying Heroku app, very easy. You just need to uh, click on this button to deploy the Heroku app. And you need to make sure you register with Heroku. And if you want more details on it, please watch my previous videos where I'm doing this. To put this in a flash mode, you need to press both buttons. There are two buttons on each side. And you can see uh, one is marked reset, the other one uh, is marked flash. So you press them both and then let it go. And you see the top LED flicker. Step six is to capture your remote codes and update your sketch. So you're going to be flashing this sketch twice. So the way the sketch is set up, is is gives you if you use your remote it's going to output your remote codes to your serial console your Arduino serial console so once you capture the remote then you can come down here and uh, this function right here send command <clears throat> it has a switch case statement so which is zero for the turning on and off the TV one to turn the volume down and so on. So these codes you see, you need to replace these with your TV or whatever device you're using. So I'm using uh, Sony TV, so I'm gonna capture those code. And I verified these already. And they work on my TV. I captured them in similar fashion. So I'm gonna show you how to capture these. So what do you do is you flash this sketch first and I'm going to show you how to capture these and then you can come and update these uh, for your TV or device and then you can reflash this again same code and then you can test it and it should work okay so I updated my information and now I'm gonna flash this sketch to my uh, node MCU It's compiling right now. And you should see uh, LED blinking here. Once it start flashing, you should see LED blinking on the Node MCU. So I wanted to tell you that um, this is just a test version. Uh, this is now how I'm gonna be using it, but this is to show you guys uh, what you can do with it. Eventually, it's gonna be different uh, when I implement it, uh, but this is just uh, help you guys to figure out uh, the codes for your devices and play around with it. Uh, I was not intended to do this tutorial, but because it's taking me a longer, long time to figure all these things out, so I'm, uh, I decided to do this tutorial. Okay, so now it's um, flashing, and hopefully you can see this LED, blue LED blinking. Yep, right there. So once it finishes 100%, um, then we'll go ahead and uh, capture our IR codes. So one thing to keep in mind is the uh, serial is set to 1152. So you need to make sure when you launch your serial monitor right here, 
uh, you select the same rate so okay so I'm gonna launch this so we'll make sure you have the same rate selected here and I'm gonna take my remote I'm gonna take my remote and point it and press power button on it as, as you can see <clears throat> it's capturing the codes so this is a hex code um, so it's a 90 protocol 4 um, if you guys want to figure out what the protocol uh, means right here you need to look in uh, the libraries and they list all of them uh, they are different one for Sony so this is for for Sony so if you go into um, if you go into Arduino uh, libraries IR remote ESP8266 and uh, go into the source and look for the IR remote right here dot H file um, and when you open up you can actually see um, so right here these are the uh, types so minus one is unknown if you see minus one on your console like right here that means it's unknown used unused is uh, zero and then you can start from one and two and three and four so if this is the fourth one mine is Sony and you can see the Sony right here fourth one and if you keep following in a similar fashion uh, you can figure out which one it is so okay if you look at my um, code right here uh, this is to power on and off so it says there's only one power button so every time you press it if a TV is on it turns it off if it's uh, off it turns it on so the code is a 90 so you need to put this on lower case so the way you do this is um, if you look at the code I capture a 90 uh, so the way I need to put it in in this command ir send dot uh, ir send dot send Sony the hex value is 0x and then the same exact code that I captured from the serial console so I just need to add and I need to put it in lowercase and the uh, the bits is 12 for the Sony you can uh, take a look at it for the other versions and I'm asking it to uh, send the code three times so it's gonna repeat it three times so next uh, I want to do volume up so if I take my remote and press the volume up button here and you should see on the screen uh, I'm trying to fit it in here now. So I'm going to do volume up so you see that uh, 490 uh, and it's listing the protocol 4 which is Sony and 490 is the volume up and then volume down is C90 and also um, the mute button if I press mute it's 290 if you want to unmute it you press the same button that's 290 also um, select input I want to do this select input is a 50 there are big codes that are coming up you don't need to use those uh, it's a little bit weird the way it processes it I'm not sure what's going on but mm, we'll figure it out but a 50 is the one that I need to use and you can see the minus one is there because you didn't understand uh, um, the code being sent over I guess there's an issue with library I'm not sure but you press it again you see protocol 4 and that's for Sony a 50 so that's the one to select the input so when input is launched I could do menu up or menu down menu left or right I'm not using those for now I'm just gonna do up and down and then select this is the enter button a 70 so if you look at my all my codes um, you know a70 is the select so I have um, a70 here for the enter so I capture all these codes I press the button capture the code and I put 
you know, I put the hex value, um, convert this to copy the actual code and turn the letter into the lower case and put X zero for each one of them. So I have a switch case up to eight, um, volume up, mute, select the, um, launch the menu to select the HDMI input. I can tell it to move up, move down, enter, and exit the menu. This is very simple setup just to demonstrate how we can control our devices. So once you capture all these codes, you put them in these um, uh, cases appropriately where they need to be. You can add more or you can remove them. Step seven is to reflash Node MCU with updated sketch. And once you're done, uh, go ahead and flash the same sketch onto your node MCU. So what I tried to do with this sketch was to create a sketch that you flash it first, capture all your code, then update the sketch and flash it again. So it saves a lot of headache and a lot of time. And now once you do that, you no longer need the, uh, the uh, you no longer need the um, IR receiver. So you can unplug that and you can use your um, IR emitter to do the job because that's all you need for you to control your device. Step eight, create if templates for each action. So here are all the commands for if templates. So you need to create templates for each command. Uh, this is just a temporary work until I get the uh, Google and Alexa skills um, set up. So since this is work in progress, so I wanted to share with you guys. So I decided to do it this way. So you will be giving a command, OK Google, the only part you need to put in a um, if the sketch is this power on and uh, you can skip the OK Google part and then you need to copy paste this. So once it's done, I'm going to go ahead and test it. So usually you cannot see the emitter uh, with the plain sight. So you need to look through the camera to make sure that it is uh, sending the IR code. So if I asked Google Home to uh, power on or power off TV, you should do it. Okay, Google, power on TV. Okay, performing action. So it sends the code three times. Okay, Google, power off TV. Okay, performing action. So there we go, guys. Uh, this is how you set up the uh, not, uh, Node MCU, or for that matter, e, um, ESP8266, and um, to control your uh, devices. So this is for TV only. Um, next tutorials coming up. I will be doing my receiver, uh, my HDMI switcher, uh, PlayStation, and Xbox. Step nine: test and enjoy. Okay, Google, power on TV. Okay, performing action. Okay, Google, power on TV. Okay, performing action. OK, Google, select input. OK, performing action. OK, Google, TV menu, move up. OK, performing action. OK, Google, enter selection. OK, performing action. OK, Google, mute TV. OK, performing action. OK, Google, turn TV volume up. 
Okay, performing action. Okay, Google. Turn TV volume down. Okay, performing action. Okay, Google. Power off TV. Okay, performing action. <laughs>